All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Pounds to Kilos. This is episode 17 that you are watching. And we are, as I currently film this, but you'll probably be listening to it slightly later, uh, four days away from the beginning of the CrossFit Games. In fact, it's probably five because it's Sunday morning here and it starts on Thursday morning in Madison. So they're still on Saturday night over there. So we're very close to the CrossFit Games. And because of that, I thought I'd do a show which is... uh, almost more supporter-based than commentary-based. And what I mean by that is I'm going to be making very biased predictions about the CrossFit Games that favor our Pacific uh, athletes, if that makes sense. Now, within those predictions, I'm also got a a few more uh, serious predictions and takes on some things that we might see go down at the CrossFit Games. But for the most part, what I thought I'd do is just sort of discuss where we think some of our athletes will fall over the next week. And... um, you know, what stories might emerge from them. And some of them are probably more what I would like to see happen as opposed to what I think might happen. But uh, either way, it's, a, it's an exciting time of year. And the CrossFit Games is, uh, yeah, it really is the pinnacle of our sport of CrossFit. It's not the, not necessarily the pinnacle of CrossFit itself. People should be very careful of understanding that we're watching the sport of CrossFit not right now. Um, that's different to what occurs at an affiliate level. And I think people are getting better at understanding that. But certainly the CrossFit Games is the pinnacle of, of our sport. And it comes, uh, it's the pointy end of, uh, of what's been an interesting season, a season of change. We've documented that a lot, not just myself, but almost every CrossFitter has had, a, had an opinion on that. And uh, I think it's nice to return to um, uh, the event that, I guess, stayed from last year. So of all the events or the regionals, they're all sort of scrapped, if that makes sense. And the one thing that stayed true was the, was the CrossFit Games. So... Um, it's a different games, but it's going to be a good game. So why don't we get into some uh, some content about what I believe will happen at the CrossFit Games. And the first thing actually isn't very biased. This is my first prediction about the CrossFit Games. Um, you know what? Before I start predicting stuff, I must say thank you very much. Uh, the sponsor for this show is FitAid. And um, they've got a new Zero. There's a new FitAid Zero and FitX, uh, FitAid RX Zero with creatine in it. Um, nice to have a fit aid or a, a, a workout um, drink that doesn't have any sugar in it. So uh, super, super pleased that this is now out in the market in Australia and uh, very tasty drink, dangerously tasty, I might add. I've already punched through a few of them. Okay, let's get into um, some predictions. My first one is this. The cuts after day one will be very, very fair and they will make for better viewing the events that will be tested prior to the cuts will ensure that everybody that deserves to get through the cuts will get through the cuts. In saying that, I believe that we will see a big name not get through the first uh, cut. Okay, so there's a lot of meat on the bone there. Let let me talk you through why I'm predicting that. Um, The first part of that statement is, is pretty brutal, but I think I've attended enough high-level CrossFit competitions to, uh, to back myself on this one. The reality is, even at high-level CrossFit competitions, the crowd is really waiting for the top two heats in each um, of the categories. And I know that sounds really, really harsh because we're at the CrossFit Games, but the vast majority of people who are watching online, the vast majority of people who are attending at the stadium... They want to see the heat with Matt Fraser, Patrick Belmar, Tia Claire Toomey, Katrin Davis Dotter. I am taking absolutely nothing away from those people that find themselves in the, the fourth, fifth, or sixth heat, whatever it might be. Um, well, actually, it's the first, second, third heat, sorry, because the heats get progressively higher in terms of the ranked athletes. But it's just a reality. I've attended regionals six times. I've been on the floor five of them, and I've attended one sanctional. And I can tell you that the energy in the room lifts as the heat pro- heats progress. It would be obscene to have the entire field competing all weekend. It would be... Boring's not the right word because uh, and it's never boring, but it would be extremely repetitive. And you know that particularly in Saturday and Sunday, basically the first five to six heats potentially if you've got everyone to compete are not irrelevant but you're not watching anybody who's going to be vying for the podium and and probably not even vying for a top 10 so the cuts are going to make for better viewing that's that's a fact um the individual athletes that get cut they, they obviously have like a feel for somebody who's trained all year and gets cut after a day 
However, to the second part of the statement, I believe day one is gonna be very thorough and very pure CrossFit. So last year's day one was extremely pure CrossFit. There was a, a 30 muscle ups for time, there was a CrossFit total, and then there was also a crit race. And some of you might be thinking, wait a second, crit race, pure CrossFit? It's like they're always going to have something like that to, to make the point that here's the gymnastics, here's the weightlifting, the crit race is the sort of the Nirvana structural piece, but it's outside of the gym. So that's, that's, that is quintessential CrossFit to test something that isn't predictable. So um, I, I think we'll get events, we won't, we're not going to get a repeat, but we're going to get events not dissimilar to that. And what that's going to do is, is really make the cream rise to the top. Um, and I, I genuinely believe that after the events of day one, it's going to be it's going to be difficult to mount a case that the better CrossFitters weren't given their opportunity to make sure they don't miss the cut. Um, so I think that by, uh, that combined with the fact that it's going to be more interesting with lesser athletes makes the cut really quite fair, if, it, if that makes sense. So the final piece of that statement was that I believe we will see a big name miss. And um, I think everyone sort of went around... I've heard a few people say that, that we're going to see someone miss. And I think everyone's sort of thinking, oh, something's going to go wrong. Like, you know, someone's rower will break or someone will, you know, get a bad judge's call or something like that. I don't believe it's that. I just believe there's actually a lot of good CrossFitters out there. And the people that have won national championships are not getting potentially the respect that they deserve um, in relation to how competitive they'll be to the more known athletes. Um, I can I have the data to back this up, um, and what I mean by that is that if I jump on the leaderboard for the Open, jump on from any year, um, go look at let's let's look at our CrossFit Games champion. Why don't we look at Katrin Davis' daughter's performance from 2015 to 2000 and uh, she won in 2015-16? I can almost guarantee you that in the Open, there would be events in the Open that she was beaten in by somebody who potentially didn't go to the games, that's a definite, um, and somebody who potentially didn't even go to regionals. That's, that's probably less likely. But my, my point being is that given the right events, some athletes that are you know maybe not competitive at even a regionals level can be competitive against, against the right games athletes. Um, and, uh, and for that reason, I just think the, the cards may fall a certain way where somebody who um, is just really fit right now, gets the events that they uh, that favor them, and then they, uh, they make a real rush at trying to go up the leaderboard in day one, and that inevitably is gonna push someone down out of a qualifying or out of a, out of a spot where they make the cut. Um, so, like I said, I think we're gonna see a big name miss, but we're not gonna see them miss because they made a mistake or because they did something wrong. I just think that we need to give the people who have qualified through the national champ qualification process the respect that they deserve and there's obviously based on the open results there's some that won't be as competitive but i think there's plenty that uh, that will be competitive so that's my first prediction for the crossfit game the cuts are going to be good things and uh, we are going to see a little bit of drama unfold with those cuts okay let me move on to prediction number two okay prediction number two and this is certainly uh, a prediction which i uh, am acknowledging is super biased I believe we will see both Dean Linda Layton and James Newbury break into the top 10 of the CrossFit Games. Um, this, uh, there's so many different variables that come into play as to whether or not this will in fact happen. Obviously, James and Dean have to perform. That's, that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is that the programming does need to go their way. Um, I know that sounds like, you know, if it, it doesn't really matter what the programming is. Matt Fraser's won every year and Rich Froning won every year before that irrespective of the programming. Yes, yes, I agree. Um, however, um, you know, they're gonna need some some stuff to come up where they get a really high score in certain events. And that, that happened last year. Dean won an event in the same event. James came, I believe it was third. I think Vakowski was second in that particular event. So that'll need to happen. Um, and then naturally their competitors will need to potentially fall in certain places in other events. Okay, I'm stating the obvious. Why do I think this is gonna be uh, the case? Let me make a case for James. I believe that James is 
from what I can tell, and I have interacted with James, I've talked to him before, I've, I've been around him a fair bit, given the, um, the regional sort of environment and sanctionals environment. He is one of the most methodical and calculated and well-prepared athletes. He's very, very focused on recovery as much as any athlete I've seen in our sport. For that reason, I believe the changes to the season will have favoured an athlete like that most. So he qualified very early on for the Games through the Australian CrossFit Championships. And I believe giving him that much time to prepare for the Games and, and him being able to adjust his training accordingly with ebbs and flows, I think he will um, peak at the Games more so than any other time before um i spoke to him earlier this year at one of the open events and um he used to need to peak for the open to to make sure he's qualified for regionals and then he used to obviously have to peak for regionals to make sure he qualified for the games now that was removed for him and um i i really believe that he will go top 10 this year i i think um i think his preparation is just so solid and um yeah, I really believe it's going to it's going to work out that way for him. Dean Linda Layton, this is more of a hail mary call from me, but um, I just I just feel with Dean that we knew that he was capable of so much based on things like open performances and glimpses at regionals um, over the years. Last year at regionals, he took such a big step. He was strong all weekend, and he finished in second spot, and it was never any doubt that he was going to qualify for the CrossFit Games. This year, um, he qualified through the open. Um, but I think what I'm, I think what gives me the most confidence about Dean's performance is the way he went about it at the CrossFit Games last year. I, I really see a change in Dean's mindset, and I think he believes that he now belongs in that top bracket of athletes. I, I knew, I know he always probably said he believed, but his last two competitions, major competitions, have been the CrossFit Games and the 2018. CrossFit uh, Pacific Regionals, both of which he was unbelievably um, impressive on the floor. And uh, I just think we've seen a little change in his mindset as to as to how he belongs. It was disappointing he didn't compete at the Down Under Championships, but he did have an injury he was nursing. So maybe the Dean of Old would have pushed through that injury and potentially made it worse and ruined his season. But I, I understand he's managed that and got on top of that. So yeah, I just... From what I can tell, I just see a mindset change in Dean Little Leighton. He's one of the most talented athletes on the on the card, and um, I think he'll put his best foot forward this year and really believe that that he is part of that top ten bracket. Obviously, fifteenth last year, it'd be it'd be a sort of a natural progression. So we'll see how uh, how Dean goes. Okay, my third prediction is that Alethea Boone will win the thirty five to thirty nine year old Masters category this year at the CrossFit Games. Um, I don't think this is a particularly controversial prediction. Um, that's not to write off the other athletes that are in that um, in that bracket. But what I saw from Alethea this year at the Down Under Championships was really quite unbelievable. She she went in with such a I won't say carefree because that doesn't give her the credit she deserves. But I think she was just there. To, she said several times to have a good time and to be back at Wollongong. Um, and what she was able to do was just remarkable she looked she got better as the weekend went on which is a really good sign so she's handling the volume really well and that's something that you'll need to be able to do at the crossfit games because it's a it's a long few days um so just given the fact that she is one of only a few that qualified both individually and as a master's athlete um and she's taken the master spot where a few others took the individual spot she's got some she's got some um She's certainly got some competition to deal with. Most, um, most notably, Rebecca Voigt, who's um, been to the CrossFit Games over 10 times as an individual. She's competing this year. But Alethea's only 35 years old and Rebecca's 38 years old. Now, I know that sounds like a, a small small thing, but it just means that Alethea's just at the very uh, youngest age possible for the category, whereas Rebecca's sort of middle to older. And um, I just think that the way that I saw Alethea handle the volume at the Down Under Championship, I really believe that as the weekend progresses, she will hit her straps. Her capability with gymnastics is just so impressive. And we just know that those things are going to get tested, that complex gymnastics. And I really feel that she'll be able to put a gap between herself and the field. Last time she was at the CrossFit Games, 
she finished 21st in 2017. So she's only been away from the games as an individual for a year. So it's not like she's extremely out of practice. Um, so I, I, I really believe that Alethea will win the 35 to 39 year old category. And that'll give us another champion that we've got. We've got a few Masters champions. Obviously, Matt Swift won the 45 to 49 years old a few, a few years ago. So um, yeah, Alethea Boone will be a, a CrossFit Games champion. Let's talk. Okay, so um, the the team predictions. I said this would be a biased podcast um, or a biased prediction, but I'm not going to predict anything outrageous for Project X and Exterminators. Um, my prediction is that I think they're very well calculated and planned te- planned teams, and for that reason, I can see them surviving the first th- three team cuts. Um, the, the teams are cut much more frequently than the individuals, um, and they're cut much more aggressively. So um, it's, I think in both of their minds, they'd be going to win the games. That's, that's the type of athletes they are. But realistically, I think they probably are both focused on, hey, let's just not get cut day one to start off with. Like, let's get through the first event, like take it event by event. So why don't I think that Project X or Exterminators will win the CrossFit games? Um, I think they're both excellent teams with incredible depth. Like both of them have got three out of four individual athletes from yesteryear. Um, and then the fourth member in each team has uh, competed in a team in uh, at the CrossFit Games. So respectively, that's Kate Gordon on, um, on Exterminators and Harriet Roberts on Project X. So they're very evenly matched. And, and in fact, Exterminators actually have the most experience in terms of individual CrossFit Games appearances, which... You know, Rob Forte, obviously, and Danny Horan are contributing a lot to that. So this this is why I believe that they won't necessarily get themselves to the podium. From what I can tell, you need an out-and-out star, male and star female, on, on the team. So what I mean by that is you basically need somebody who could have gone to the Games this year individually as a male and individually as a female. Both those teams have one of those. In Project X, it's Jess Coghlan. She would have gone to the games individually this year. Um, In Exterminators, it's Rob Forte. Um, He would have gone to the games individually this year, in my opinion. Now, uh, all all credit to the other three on each team who um, definitely would have gone close, but I don't think we would have seen them go. Although Zeke Grove, had he competed at Down Under, maybe that would have been the case. Um, When you look at somebody like CrossFit, Um, mayhem you've got three you've got three of them that would have gone individually Rich Froning Tasha Pasevics and China Cho Um, when you look at uh, the the Invictus team would be very very similar Um, when you look at the Romwood team or I believe it's now CrossFit Crypto they're officially calling themselves Alex Smith he would have gone very very close to going had he made that his priority Camille LeBlanc Bazinet is a previous CrossFit Games champion um, which you've qualified this year, probably a different conversation. But um, I suppose, I don't think it's it's the depth that is the problem for Project X and Exterminators. It's just, do they have, I think there's going to be a lot of individual testing of the teams, like rather than just on the worm together, like one by one, they'll have to go through workouts. And that's where teams like CrossFit Mayhem and um, and CrossFit Krypton will, will just get away from teams like Project X and Exterminators. Uh I, I don't enjoy saying that because all eight members of uh, Exterminators and Project X are, are absolutely ripping people. I've actually never met Danny Horan, sorry. Um, and they're great athletes and um, all of them are capable and deserve to be on that game's floor and in my opinion, deserve to stand on that game's podium. Um, I just don't think we'll see that happen this year. Um, so really hoping they get through the first two to three cuts and I think given how good they are with teamwork and... Um, preparing for events, I think we'll see that happen. Okay, my third and final prediction for this year's 2019 CrossFit Games is that Tia Claire Toomey will win three in a row, but she will have to come from behind in dramatic fashion to make it happen. Um, Why am I predicting that? You know what? I think a big part of me wants to see Tia win like that. I want to see Tia win. I desperately want to see her become the first woman to win three in a row. Uh, I would like it more than anything. But I just think that she's had a few different types of victories and she's sort of due for this one. Um, 
It's been an interesting season for Tia. She qualified so early. If you want to talk, hear more about that, listen to the previous interview uh, show. With the, it's an interview with Shane Orr. I took a close look at the Rogue Invitational and Sarah Sigmund's daughter's performances are very, very strong. I would say that Sarah is the main threat to Tia and she's the she's the most real threat she's ever been. I think in previous years, it's always been, oh, what could Sarah do? She's doing it. Go back and look at the Rogue Invitational leaderboard if you get a chance. She's only a matter of seconds behind Tia in every event. In fact, from like a score point of view, they're, they're very inseparable in each event. It's just almost like Tia must have, you know, she's got that experience and she's, she's got that winning mindset. You can almost think that in the, at the end of each event, she's just decided, no, I'm putting my foot down and I'm breaking away. If Sarah gets a good start to the games and starts believing, hey, I can do this, I can really, I can win the CrossFit games, then it's going to be a big fight for Tia. And um, I just think Sarah's one of those athletes that when, when everything's going right, she just looks absolutely unstoppable. And if she gets a few events that go her way early, I think what T is going to have to do is get her over the weekend by just being super consistent and being able to handle the volume better. The, the way that I see it with Tia is that she is going to get better as the weekend goes, much like the Rich Froning scenario where we get to Sunday, everyone's beat up, and Tia is just able to hold a higher level of her capacity in those later events. Um, I mentioned before that she's had a few different types of victories. So she had the ultra close victory against Cara Saunders. She had the breakaway win last year, clear points differential. The prediction of most is that we're gonna see an even bigger points differential. Um, and I just, my gut and my experience watching this is this is just not how it plays out. Um, unless you're Matt Fraser, that's different. But I think we're gonna see her most famous victory, her most dramatic victory, and uh, the, the making of, of the greatest female CrossFitter of all time. So I'm really looking forward to the female side of competition, but I don't think it'll be all roses for Tia. I think she'll, she'll have to do some work. Okay, guys, that is the end of my predictions for the CrossFit Games. I, I wanted to provide you some content, which is just not, look, there's so much stuff out there about the CrossFit Games, and and really what I like doing is just sitting down and having a conversation with people about what they think might happen. So I decided to have that conversation with myself and share it with you. Um, some exciting news, the 2019 CrossFit Games is gonna be broadcast live um, by a number of different, I guess you call them vendors or broadcasters if you will. So there'll be a main feed and then that feed will go out to several broadcasters who will have their own commentary team. I'm gonna be on the uh, commentary team for Perfit. Um, so I'll be providing a link for that and um, I'll be calling some events. So I'll be set up in this room late at night watching CrossFit Games, calling my friends and uh, calling all the other athletes. I say my friends because I'm, I'm looking forward to, to watching Kate and Rob in particular on uh, Exterminators and, and getting to call them. So guys, enjoy the CrossFit Games. It's such a great event. And it, like I said, it's the pinnacle of our sport. Um, and uh, shoot me any uh, comments or feedbacks you have about any predictions you might have on the CrossFit Games. Until then... Um, keep converting pounds to kilos and uh, go, go you Aussies and go you New Zealanders.